Hello and welcome to Banks Lion Jewellers. I'd like to talk a little bit today about the Rolex Submariner, the iconic sports watch. Originally introduced in 1953, originally the watch was water resistant to just 100 metres, 330 feet. Nowadays they're water resistant to 300 metres, 1000 feet. Each and every watch case is subjected to a three step process a vacuum compression and condens condensation test to ensure they're fully water resistant. What we have in front of us today the stainless steel, original black dial and black bezel, the anniversary edition which was introduced after the 50th anniversary of the Rolex Submariner, obviously, uh, using the iconic green colours of Rolex. We have the very latest bimetal steel and 18 karat yellow gold version with the new richer blue dial and bezel which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then we also have the 18 karat white gold with the blue dial and bezel. Anything that looks gold on Rolex is 18 karat gold. <clears throat> they don't use anything less than 18 karat gold. The steel they use is 904L stainless steel. It's the highest quality surgical stainless steel that anybody uses in the watch industry. Rolex are interested in making the finest watches, irrespective of the price. The time and care that goes into each watch is exceptional. The attention to detail is also amazing. Rolex manufacture every part, every component of the watch themselves. They even smelt their own 18 karat gold in-house, in their own factory. This is to ensure that the colour is uniform throughout the whole range. This is a 40 millimeter case, a monoblock case where the bezel, crown and case back screw onto the central case for a total and perfect seal. Every Submariner date, in fact every Rolex watch with a date, has the Cyclops lens. This is a sapphire crystal with a little magnifying lens over the date, which magnifies the date two and a half times, enabling it to be easier to read. Some of the features about the diving watch, you have the unidirectional serochrome bezel. The idea of it being only unidirectional is that if you are diving and you accidentally knocked the watch, you can't spend less time, spend more time underwater. You can only spend less time underwater. So obviously that's a massive safety feature, typical of most uh, diving watches. Very smooth action on the bezel. The ceramic bezel that was introduced onto the Submariner recently is a serochrome uh, ceramic. It's virtually scratch resistant and unaffected by light. So it will not fade, the sun will not fade it. This was sometimes a problem with the older models <coughs> where after consistent exposure to the sun you'd find that the bezel would fade and need to be replaced. This will not now happen with the new scratch resistant serochrome bezels. The green piece, or sometimes people know it as the Hulk, <coughs> Well, it's restrict availability of this watch quite significantly. Probably for every, we get one green Submariner for every four black, something in that uh, order of ratio. The crown on the Submariner is a triplock crown, a very similar process to the feature on a submarine hatch. It actually screws down onto the case and the triple safety device is donated by the three dots on the crown. The setting procedure, just to explain, many people will know this but it's no harm in going through it. <clears throat> Every Rolex Oyster case has a screw down crown. To wind the watch up if you've not been wearing it and it's been left on the side, you unscrew the crown until it comes into that neutral position. You can then wind the mechanism up. It's an automatic chronometer rated movement. 
but you can wind it up either that way or going back and forwards. You cannot overwind an automatic watch. There's a little clutch that disengages the hairspring from the winding mechanism, so when the mainspring is fully wound up, the you're just basically wasting your time. <clears throat> so you can't damage the mainspring. To set the date, pull the crown out one notch. This will then allow you to rotate the crown clockwise and change the date. Today is the 20, uh, 21st, so in order to set this accurately, I will actually set this up for the 20th. So we put that onto the 20th. If I then, you'll notice the watch movement is still running, the second hand is still running. If I then pull the crown out a further position, that stops the mechanism. I can then wind the hands forward and I can check when midnight is. So that, with the date changing, is obviously midnight. We're now on to the correct date, and it's 10.12, so we'll wind this forward to 12 minutes past 10, push the crown in, the watch will begin running again. Obviously, if I want to be precise, I can stop it on the hour and then push it in. And then you need to just push it onto the case, being careful that you don't cross-thread it, and whilst pushing it gently on, just screw the case, the uh, crown up. Comfortably finger-tight is quite sufficient. You don't need to drill the crown onto the case, you will end up damaging the threads. And then that is perfectly water resistant to, as I said, 300, 300 meters, 1,000 feet. Another feature of the um, Submariner is the glide lock clasp with a safety clip. This is uh, introduced with the new, new bracelet, uh, the new case design that came out just a few years ago. Actually, another important fact is the fact that these steel links down the center are now solid. This is true of the gold version as well. You'll see that the, if you can just see that, that the center links are solid gold, so much more resistant to stretching and expanding during wear, uh, during excessive wear. So, talking about the, <coughs> the clasp, you have the safety device, safety clip. You can then open that up, and then inside you have the glide lock. This is ideal even for everyday use, in that if it's a hot climate and you're slightly hot and comfortable, you can just lift that clip up and you can glide it to a slightly larger position. The main purpose of it is to be used for the diving purposes or go on the outside of a wetsuit, but it can be used for everyday use, as I said. Very simple to use, just move it along to the position that is comfortable to you, click it back into position, and there you go. As I mentioned earlier, the blue bezel and blue dial on the new steel and gold, there is a slight difference. When the Cerachrome bezel and new dial was introduced a few years ago, the colour was very similar to the blue that we have on the white gold. Originally, the steel and gold uh, Submariner in its previous guise was a much more royal, deeper blue, uh, and they introduced it with this slightly more powdery blue. I think quite rightly they've now perfected the colour of the ceramic and the dial, and they've now reintroduced the steel and gold version in blue with this much deeper royal, more regal blue. Uh, I think it looks so much better. The white gold version will continue with this more, slightly more powdery blue look, so there is a, a difference between the two models. The, as I mentioned, you have a Cyclops lens and the sapphire crystal. The luminosity on the new watch, uh, Chromalite, this is very much brighter, much more um, intense in the dark, and will last up to about eight hours, Rolex claim. So that should last through a full full evening's wear. All these watches have the Calibre 3135 chronometer rated automatic movement, which is COSC certified, Certificate of Official Chronometer Rating from the Independent Swiss Horological Institute. 
They all have the new power magnetic blue parachrome hairspring, so they are more resistant to um, magnetism, which obviously is the bane of any automatic watch. And the movement is highly resistant to extremes of temperature, vibration and shocks. I'll just show you what it looks like. Take my GMT off. The 18 karat gold obviously being gold is so much heavier than the stainless steel version but quite an iconic, a fabulous watch. Quite understated. Anybody that knows Rolex will know that the blue is denotes a white gold version as opposed to steel because you cannot have the blue dial and bezel on the stainless steel version. You only get the black and the green. So anybody that knows spots you're wearing this will realise you're wearing white gold but to anybody else it would look like you're wearing a stainless steel watch. Quite, quite understated. I hope you found that interesting and informative. Uh, we will be doing another blog shortly uh, on the, the GMT.